if you have been on this channel or subscribed to this channel for a year or longer, guys, we need to talk. Winning team members, I need to talk to you guys because, listen, this is very serious because I, a lot has changed, okay? And I am struggling to, to like make videos that I want to make because I am concerned about um, you guys. And so I'm going to explain everything because there's a lot of things that have changed. I, for one, have changed massively as a person, like in ways that I never truly expected. And so I really think that some of you might need to unsubscribe. OK, listen, I need you guys to protect your mental health and I need you guys to protect yourselves. OK, but listen, I'm going to explain it all. And I know this sounds insane, but you understand. Right. So. I have recently been living in what I can only describe as my villain origin story <laughs> for like the past, I don't know how many weeks. It's been really hard for me to upload for like weeks, if not months now, because my blood has literally been boiling about just like a lot of things in the world that are going on. Obviously, my job has also really pushed me over the edge. I haven't talked about this yet in any videos, but as of this season, not only am I still teaching, but... I've been teaching English as well now and all I can say is that working with the kids seeing them every day and seeing how much so many things are working against them dealing with the system that everybody's paying all their taxes into that is just horrific and dealing with the parents looking at the state of the world the state of how everybody now wants to be these justice warriors now that P Diddy's been in jail even though we've known he's been doing this for decades and I'm sick and tired of society always being a hundred years behind I'm sick and tired of us complaining about things like the price of eggs and this that and the other when the Lord literally gave us fruit and vegetables and plants and animals and everything for us to have for free on the earth we're here wondering about how we're going to pay our bills when for our rent and whatever when the lord literally made us the lord of our own lands but now we've got landlords there's just so many things i truly feel like as of turning this my birthday this year i have truly woken up in a nightmare and i truly feel like i've never hated being alive more than right now and the thing is about it is it has kind of switched me like as a person because the person you guys would have known like all this time i was very like you know, social, like, like, not social justice, what am I talking about? You know, speaking up about Hollywood and speaking up about this, all these things. You guys know I've been speaking up about a lot of this stuff historically. But I've gotten to the point now where my patience has run out completely with the adult population. And the truth is that it's not even like I don't have anything nice to say. It's that I just don't have the time to waste coddling the adult population anymore. And I've decided I'm going to be the a-hole because we need it because now we're in a time where people are finally like you know realizing like people are asking the question like oh how did we get here how did this happen how did that happen i'm like why are we always asking that when when the signs that that lead us to be to where we are today are always in front of our face and when they are and when some of us are ringing the alarm bells people are like oh you're conspiracy theorists oh i'm sure it's not that bad oh i'm sure this i'm sure that blah 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 blah, blah. and then when everything goes to, to hell then everyone wants to wonder, oh, how did this happen? And on top of that, no one's taking accountability. It's always somebody else's fault. Oh, that person should have done something. Oh, that person should have done something. That's been one of my issues with society and the division. Everybody's just against each other. Everybody has a group that they're against, that they're fighting up against. And I think the political parties is part of, like, this year for me has been a chain of reaction in terms of, like, I haven't been surprised about anything that's come out. Most of everything that's happening is everything the Lord has said would be happening for years and things I've been seeing for a long time. Again, I don't know why, like, especially as a woman, why are so many women shocked? We're supposed to have intuition. How did you guys not know, just like some of us, that certain people were unsafe and certain people were sketchy? We're supposed to have intuition, all this. We're all, all here doing astrology saying, I'm spiritual, I carry crystals. What's the, what's the use in any of that? If we can't even protect the kids, if we can't even spot predators when we need to, what's the point of doing any of that if we're not even going to be the mothers that the Lord asked for us to be? Like, you know, this is how I'm feeling. So I'm looking at all these stuff happening. Yeah, I'm not surprised by any of it, right? But do you know what? It just hit me in a way that I didn't expect it to hit me. And I think it's because I'm finally an adult enough that it, I can actually see everything and feel it for what it is. 
is just um, the response to people to all this stuff going down is what has infuriated me because people are acting like I said like we don't know how we got here right and it's become a point where I don't even look at any group anymore as sitting on the right side of justice or sitting even on the right side or on the light side even if you will because I feel like everybody's in things for selfish gains and as we've been going through I've been saying this for years guys all of this has been building up over my entire life basically right all of this has been building up like as the time goes on and we go through all the seasons and we go through all the stages we go from um um it's like the one thing to the next thing to the next thing there's division in the church then now I'm even feeling like a lot of the people in the church who are who are so-called on the right side of justice right a lot of them seem hella prideful like they're happy to tear another Christian down or they're happy to tear to see the fall of somebody else I'm not happy to see the do you guys think I'm happy to see the fall of anybody this is what I'm saying people have got the wrong attitude in the world and I I realize that maybe the Lord has allowed me to get to this point to bring out another side of me because I tell you guys I listen we'll come back to that right so people are just doing this for prideful reasons. A lot of Christians now want to speak up about this, speak up about that. I'm like, dude, you're only speaking up because you got kicked off, the, off of that platform. You don't even, you didn't even have the bollocks to walk away from these big platforms. You were just the same old slave to mammon, to money like everybody else was. So now because you've been kicked off of a so-and-so or you've been demonetized, whatever, now you want to be a part of the gang of those of us who've been speaking up the truth. How many people get hurt along the way? Because this is my thing. There's people getting hurt along the way. Now, even with the political parties, it's the same thing. At a certain point, you know, I could I could have a side of the political parties that I would sit on. But now I've just realised both sides are just heavily prideful and just looking down on the other side. And I'm like, are we actually even about the people anymore? Or are we just happy to be against the other person? Are we just happy to laugh at the other person? Like, it's a joke. Po politics in this world is a joke. It's not even funny. Earlier today, I saw um, some stupid clip of, I'm not going to say which presidential candidate because can i just say as well about all of this us in the west should be so ashamed of ourselves we are the laughing stock of the world right now especially america i'm so sorry the american presidential election america used to be something like i don't know what happened in america but my gosh <laughs> literally i don't know what happened like th listen if i was some of these dictators in the world i would be laughing and the state of politics in the United States, the state of the politics in this country, I would be laughing. You guys should be, I feel like the world should be thanking God that we're not in World War Three because I promise you, those of us in the West, we ain't ready. And we ain't ready like these other folks. And we ain't, our governments ain't got money like these other people. We had fr freaking Vladimir Putin was just burning oils into the, after he got sanctioned and everyone was like, oh, we sanctioned him for, 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 for invading Ukraine. Listen, bro was burning get like oil, I was it oil or gas, I can't remember, into the atmosphere because he had nowhere to store it because that because he's got that much money. They are laughing in Russia. Listen guys, I have a playlist, you should check it out, and it's got videos you need to watch. And there's a video of a guy in there and he says ten reasons why he prefers to live in Russia than in England. And you guys should watch it, because it's insanely good and it's interesting to see how people do things differently. But here in the West, we want to be sold like idiots to these stupid narratives, right? And I've got sick of watching the plays of Hollywood and these couples. Like, I don't believe in, every time I hear people discussing anything to do with anything, to do with any couples in the entertainment industry, I'm like, this is all a play. Do you think that Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey are together because of love? Or this whole Jen Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck are back together? and they have all this hit, like they're just playing the fiddle they're playing you as the fool i'm sick of it so all this stuff that's been happening this year i know i've not been surprised because i've been freaking ringing the alarm bells pretty much since i came out of the damn womb right i've been ringing the freaking alarm bells the lord who and the people who who who, who cling into the lord no you know all of this stuff i told you guys i had this dream about donald trump oh well wow, isn't that interesting isn't that interesting and to do with some of the things that's happened to him interesting i don't share these dreams because first of all you guys don't people don't even believe not you guys are winning team members okay the winning team members you guys i'm telling you guys this stuff because i have to explain that i'm gonna really switch up my tone like really i'm gonna really switch up my tone because i've been like fighting off this whole year this like burning feeling inside of me and i realized i was thinking do I just have anger issues and do I need to like figure that out? But then I know myself and I'm angry because I've been, I've had severe anger in, in life before and I addressed it head on and I put in certain boundaries in order so that I will never be overcome with anger. 
or it would take a lot, right? But I realized that I'm not burning with anger, I'm burning with passion. And the passion is rooted in brokenheartedness. And what I didn't realize is that, you know, enough. And I realized that this time last year, around this time last year, the Lord was teaching me that, like, towards the end of the year, he was teaching me, like, you know, you the one of the thing that I've basically done wrong in my life is I know that life is a game. Well, I now know I've been developing it as I've been explaining it to you guys. But what I haven't realized is that I have to play a smarter game than probably the game that I'm willing to play because I want, I've always played the nice game. I've always done the, oh, you know, and good always wins and I'm just gonna, you know, play this game. I'm not fighting somebody who's fighting fair. So I have to live up to my own ethos, which is that, listen, God gives us all characteristics, personality types, opportunities of ways for us to um, play this game in life at win. And I've basically been realizing that I have a couple of tools in my arsenal that I haven't been using. And the reason why I haven't been using them is because I, it's not, there are some moral, moral and ethical <laughs> question marks <laughs> attached to them you know, and I really believe, like, and I know this is kind of a wild thing to say, but I'm going to say it, I really believe that the grace of the Lord is there for me to actually test the waters in that area, because there are certain, I keep saying, I have been saying so much all year, I really feel like I've had an epiphany today, I have been saying all year, and even last year, you guys will hear me say, and last year, I didn't tell you guys this last year, but last year was like the year of temptation, when I tell you that last year I was offered every opportunity, every everything you could possibly think I would want. I asked the Lord for two things last year. I'm not going to say what they were. At the start of the year, two things that I thought were virtually were impossible. And let me tell you that both of those things came to fruition to an extent because God had to pull the plug once I realized that he gave me exactly what I asked. And it was the wrong thing that I asked for, right? or at least the wrong timing of me asking for it. Anyway, it's a whole long thing. Um, but the Lord basically, you know, I kind of realized that I I need to, I need to play the game. And I've been uncomfortable, like with this feeling, like, cause I've been feeling like, I've been like rejecting myself essentially because I'm feeling like, oh, but is that like, is that godly? Like to do that, to do X, Y, and Z, whatever. And yeah, the year of temptation last year, yeah, so the year of temptation, whatever. Um, and so, you know, at the end of it all, I was quite depressed because I was like, wow, I've really been offered, like, in this life, I've actually been offered everything and anything that the world could offer me, like, everything and anything. Like, when I tell you that the devil has offered me everything you could ask, you could offer me, every opportunity that could be my wildest dreams, every type of whatever, everything, everything I've been offered everything like this literally this is what I'm saying so the fact that I've decided to maintain my position underpaid overworked as a teacher dealing with the adults of tomorrow of today sorry trying to teach the youth of tomorrow the fact that I've dealt with how people have treated me and I've had done all of this stuff and I've taken the high road and I've taken this and I've been I've, I've been trying to do the right thing my entire life right and guess what I've decided I'm getting my hands dirty I'm getting my hands dirty and I feel like you know what obviously I don't mind getting my hands dirty listen I work with kids listen when you work with children especially babies you have a different type also if you grow up with brothers <laughs> and only brothers you have a different relationship with getting your hands dirty <laughs> right but um and just you know whatever your standards of you know whatever whatever you, you can put up you can you can tolerate I should say tolerance is the better word <laughs> um but in the sense that I've decided, you know what, I'm already exiled from the church anyways. Church people don't like me because I threaten the religious spirit that a lot of them are clung to, which is keeping them enchained and why the power of God isn't working inside of them. I'm already exiled from society because I don't really fit in in general for a lot of different reasons. I'm a deeply scientific, deeply creative person at the same time. It doesn't seem to make any sense to nobody. I have good intentions, so I'm always up against other people with bad intentions, and obviously society always sides with them anyway, right? It's the jury of the sheeple. The jury of the sheeple always falls for these perpetrators because these people are the geniuses who know they have to put up a good narrative, just like the devil. They're literally their father's children. 
this fake narrative they have to get everybody to believe so they can protect themselves and then the victims get left over so I'm like hey it kind of hit me like I may as well just like fully embrace the fact that hey I've been exiled anyway <laughs> and guess what some of these tools that I have I can utilize them for um the greater good of the, the groups that I care about like the kids for example there are things that I can do from my standpoint because I'll tell you guys something that I haven't really utilized in my life that I was thinking about today is that I somehow am always around people with money like every season in my life I somehow end up around people with money and people that want to invest in me so this year again as per usual I've had people I have people who want to invest right and I was all prim and proper and all like oh, but I, I don't want to do this unless I can 100% make sure that yada yada. Why am I doing that? <laughs> listen, I should just be boldly telling people, listen, just trust me. Let me do things my way. And this is going to be something because, you know, like I said, I'm realizing that there's these all these opportunities I haven't been taking. Now, the reason why I'm telling you guys this stuff yet is because... um. I, the way that it's going to come out and it's going to come across is going to be quite vicious because I've decided that this adult population, listen, let me tell you a little bit about, a little bit more about me, okay? So what people don't understand about me, which I'll explain to you guys, is that when people say stuff to me like, oh, you care too much what people think or there's good people out there, there's this, there's that. As far as I'm concerned, according to the data at hand, that is not logically true. That is not truthful. Because like I've said to you guys, the, the, the everything I'm telling you about society, which is the society as it is, powerless, broken, broke, bitter, ac accusational, you know, all these different things, easily swayed by predatorial people. That is what I came out from and I grew up in. And that is the world. So I am not, what I used to think to myself is like, you know what, if, if my experience, if the world is different to my experience, then I can just step out from my experience, right? That's easy. I forget the past and I move on to the future, right? And I kind of feel like this is why the Lord has allowed a lot of things to linger longer for me so that I can really, you know, just unleash a different side of me. But then I realized that, no, no, some of us, listen, I'll, I'll put it into an easy, an easy way for you guys to understand. I want you guys to understand that. Imagine you talk to a victim of somebody like P. Diddy, right? And imagine that person has been trying to speak up for years, for decades. And so as far as that person's concerned, everywhere they go, everywhere they turn, everybody around them in every community that they're in, and a whole network of people are consistently making sure that this person cannot progress, or that this person does not get the support they need, or this person is getting blacklisted, because if that person gets what they need, it's going to bring every big thing come crashing, tumbling down. So their viewpoint, you as the world who are not in that that like I don't even want to call it partnership because that sounds too soul tie. We rebuke every soul tie that does not come from heaven in the name of Jesus. Um, but you know the predator and the victim, right? You've got the predator, the victim, and you've got the jury of the sheeple, right? If all the jury of the sheeple are believing this predator anyway, what people don't understand is everybody over there is pretty much enjoying everything in life, while the people on the other side are living in hell constantly because everybody over here right think about the likes of mr beast p diddy all these people these are the people that the world is giving their money to the world is giving their time their attention their subscriptions hello let's talk about it let's be so for real right now i've made nearly 1600 videos and i don't even have a thousand subscribers and what have i been talking about the children and child trafficking i've been talking about how for you guys can you know be protecting yourself from these demonic um record deals in the entertainment industry and how the devil can't buy your soul and what the government's doing against you i've been saying everything to help people win and i have 600 and something subscribers right i'm here like the quiet girl in the in the desert trying to scream out and that's how my entire life has been meanwhile everybody else is having a party over there obviously people not knowing that they're under a spell so when i say what i'm going through basically what i'm doing is i'm speaking up for myself finally and i'm saying no 
there isn't just like a small little faction of people that I have an issue with that are where the root the roots of what I've been through are it has been everywhere it has been everywhere and every community and I have just this year first for the first time felt like I found my voice in my entire life I've gone my entire life and it's only this year that I finally felt like, like I had a voice for once and that's why I dedicate myself to those who are in my position. So when people try to say, oh, I'm sure it's not like that. You're under a spell, my friend. Oh, but there's other night people. Where are those people? Because those people are over there focusing and worshipping the predators. And when I say predators, guys, I'm not talking just about in a sexual manner. I'm talking about in a life manner. I'm talking about people like Britney Spears' parents. Think about how Britney Spears felt. That's why I respect her so highly because I can't imagine what it's like to go through that on at the level to which she went through it. I cannot imagine. And that's when people were making fun of her. This is what I'm saying. You want to talk to me about society? Society is making fun of her for dancing with knives after she's been through hell. Are you kidding me? We should be happy that this woman is alive. And society who seems to care so much. This is what I'm saying. This is why I don't see the world as any type of nice place to live in. This is why, as far as this year is concerned, this is the the most time I've hated being alive the most. And I've hated being alive since I was like eight years old. I've hated being alive. I remember even when I was at university, when I first went, I remember putting the Bible scripture to live as Christ to die as gain on the back of my iPad. I got it ordered on there. You know why? Because I was thinking I'd rather be dead. And I still feel that way, to be honest, because I'd rather be with the Lord, because I this for me is the closest I'll ever get to hell. This is already hell. The only way is up. <laughs> the only way is up. There isn't nobody that I haven't got any allies. Like these are all the things I've been dealing with, you know, this year, like realizing I really haven't got any allies for real. Like I really haven't got any allies. There's nobody that has my back except from you guys. So I'm making this video for you guys because I'm like, oh, I've got to like. I can't, I can't, I don't want to bring any negativity in you guys' lives, but like, it's dark. I've been looking into the child sacrifice that goes on in the countries that I come from in Africa, which I'm going to talk about at some point because you guys won't believe what these people are doing. I have proof there was scientific research being done. You know what they're doing today in the here and now in places that I come from in the South of Africa, not South Africa, the South of Africa. Do you know what they're doing? People Christians, Christians who are going to church, who believe in this same Bible that I'd be talking about all the time, and this same God who's been the only person who's had my back since I was my whole entire life, since I gave my life to Christ at seven years old. This same, be these people are going into these churches, right? And then they're leaving. Do you know what they're doing? They're hiring witch doctors to help them with things like infertility and riches. And do you know how they're doing that? They are sacrificing humans, particularly children, and especially the children, because the children are better. This is today, and this is Christians in Africa, right? They're sacrificing children, and you know what they do? They have to be under 14 or whatever, because they have to be a virgin. If they're virgin, if they're virgin, the better, the younger, the better. And you know what they're doing? They're mutilating them, because it has to be done while they're still alive. So people are kidnapping kids. Right. This is why I can't afford to do have this stupid optimism that the world has, because when everybody else is sleeping in their beds at nighttime and enjoying their cuddles with their spouse or having their nice barbecue on the weekend or having a lovely little Christmas or doing a little Easter egg hunt. Right. Or going out in the cities when you go on holiday. This is what children are suffering in this world, like the children suffering on the on the border of the United States right now being child trafficked, like the children in the school systems right now who I don't even want to get into. And these people, even in Africa, they're calling themselves Christians. They said, do you believe in Jesus? Yes. Why do you do this? Because it works. A woman, do you know what she did? She, um, and I'm telling you guys this because I want you to understand why I'm telling you you should unsubscribe because I'm going to have to really get into the nitty gritties of this stuff, right? And you won't believe how hard it was to find this because it's all very hush hush, right? I've had to work so hard over these last few years studying to find out so much information that I know because it's so hard to find because, of course, the work of the devil is hidden. One woman, because she wanted to get pregnant, right? This is a real stories that you guys will hear me read because there was proper scientific research done with people's names, locations, everything, right? This woman had got the genitalia of a, of a boy, I believe he was four years old, that she had to strap to her underwear and sleep in for three nights and could not tell her husband she had done it in order to get pregnant. And it worked. Another man, you know, decided to sleep with his 14-month-year-old daughter, 
right? Because he asked his wife, they were like, oh, they told us we'll get rich if I do it. She, the wife says no. So when he wasn't, when she wasn't there, he just does it anyway. I'm not joking. Then you ask these people, do you believe in God? Do you believe in God of the Bible? Do you believe in whatever? Yes. Do you go to church? Yeah, of course, this is normal in the church. This is what I'm talking about. So when I was burning this year, when I, I realized all this burning I've been having inside of me, and when I tell you guys, my blood has been boiling like my blood has been boiling to the point that I cannot physically bear to talk to the members of the adult population right now I don't even want people to say hello to me don't even look in my direction don't compliment me don't say how I have a nice smile don't tell me I'm giving you the kids get away from me because I am like how has the adult population allowed this to happen and you know why I mentioned my upbringing? Because I'm used to being critiqued. I'm used to being critiqued in every single area of everything. That's why I'm hard on myself. People are like, you should be easier on yourself. I'm like, be easier on myself. It's not me who is hard on myself. It's every community I've been in. I'm around Christians. Oh, the pastor's daughter. Oh, she's wearing a tracksuit in church. She can't wear a tracksuit in church. Oh, we saw her kissing a boy under this. None of this happened, by the way. Well, the tracksuit thing did happen. I did wear a tracksuit and the aunties were complaining about it. But the stories that my parents used to get told about things I was doing, I was never doing. And can I tell you how I know I wasn't doing it? I was suffering from sexual trauma, so I didn't feel comfortable being naked in front of anybody. So this is why I wasn't doing nothing the way that people think I was doing it. <laughs> it was into adulthood when the Lord healed me of my issues with not wanting to like expose myself to anybody. <laughs> That's why it's funny when people make up all these stories. Like when my brother was telling me that at school, apparently all the guys, because my brother was younger than me. So when I was in year 11, he was in year seven. And apparently the guys, some of the other guys, I don't know why they would bother because there's no way I would have ever been interested in any of the boys that were younger than me at school. I don't care if it was one year. I don't care if they were three months younger. They, they had no chance. But anyway, we're telling my brother's stories. Oh, we heard she did this. Or this, or this. So anyways, I'm crazy. Anyways, none of it ever happened. Didn't touch, not one of them, didn't kiss, not one of them. Well, I mean, I hugged some of them, but didn't even kiss one of them. Not one guy from school didn't kiss them, secondary school, even though they were telling them all these stories. But whatever, you know? I've been critiqued in the church. I've been critiqued in my family. Oh, I'm the oldest. I'm the oldest sibling. I'm the oldest grandchild. I'm the oldest grandchild on my mum's side of the family, and I'm the oldest grandchild. Well, technically, if we're being technical, my personal grandparents, I'm the oldest. Otherwise, I'm the second oldest because I have a step-grandfather. You know what I'm saying? And I'm a woman from an African Aha background. So I have to know how to do everything. I have to know how to introduce myself to everybody and do all the little, you know, gestures and all of this, that and the other, critiqued by the family. Oh, why are you choosing to do this degree? Why aren't you doing that? Why aren't you doing this? What? Do you know that one of my... I won't even get into it because I don't want to disrespect my grandparents because shout out to them, right? But anyway, so I've been critiqued there. Then I've been critiqued as a scientist because that's what's, that's a part of it. As a scientist, you get critiqued constantly. Every single thing that you do, your methods that you're using, where you got your research, every little thing is critique. Working in the entertainment industry, in the dance studio, you're standing in the mirror for hours on end. Somebody's telling you your leg needs to be there, you need to be this. You're wearing tight clothing. You can see every single inch of your body. Critique there. Critique across the board. Critique everywhere. And those are just the things I can think off the top of my mind right now. So I'm used to being criticised. That's why I'm a winner. Because I just absorbed it and every time I remember when I was in a relationship and oh my gosh I realized with this this guy and I won't say a lot of bad things about him because listen we were both the problem we were both the problem <laughs> we were both the problem and the only difference I can say is that I just decided that we didn't need to continue to do it anymore because we knew better and so if we weren't going to do better then why are we doing anything right but I remember we did this we started off at pretty much the same playing field both having certain circumstances and then we did this because you know it's easy to critique somebody else I've always been somebody who takes all the blame because I've always been told a lot of you know a lot of situations that I'm the problem so I, what do you know what I do I don't cry about it I've absorbed it all and I've said okay I need to do better and that's what I would do I need to do better I need to do better I need to do better with everything I need to do better I need to do better I need to rise to the occasion I need to you know shut up boss up stand up and that's what I've done that's why I'm here. So I'm like, so with all the circumstances of everything that I've been through, with all the areas where I don't have any allies, not to mention, oh, the friendship is one of my favourites, as in not. Because you know how many times I have been against, and this is why I don't trust women more than I don't trust men. Listen, my issues with women are far worse than my issues with men, I can assure you, right? Every season of my life, I can tell you, every single season of my life, right? I can tell you of a woman who, again, 
makes up some story or twists the truth in some way and has everybody siding with them. Because this is what happens in all these scenarios, everybody siding with the people against me, right? So I might have some people who initially are on my team, but eventually they get swayed or eventually they, we don't talk anymore. Maybe because I end up being toxic also because I'm dealing with a lot by myself on top of the abuse. Because the abuse is on top of all of this. And I've also been abused both as a child and both as an adult. You know what I'm saying? I've nearly died many times both as a child, both as an adult, right? And all of this. So I'm going through all of this stuff and all of these people are always siding with the others. So I'm watching the others all enjoying having their communities and enjoying having people to go to when they're going through things and all of that. And you know what the result of that is, what I've done? I shut up, I bust up, I stand it up and I clung on to Jesus Christ with everything that I have. And that's why nothing can take my faith away from me because there's nothing this world can offer me because this world has never offered me anything anyway. Not anything like for me, because love don't live here, if you ask me, on this planet anymore. So I've realized that I've been through all of this I've been through critique and nothing I've ever done is good for, not even just like someone, for anyone other than the Lord. So you know what? I realised <laughs> I'm going to throw back the same energy at the adult population because guess what? I made it to 27. Yeah. And by the age of 22, guess what? I already had done my bachelor's degree with a year of research in honours, accredited by the Royal Society of Chemistry. I was already, a, what you might call it, an a, a award winning choreographer. I was already working as an entrepreneur in my own business that I started. And I was also doing consultancy and event planning, if you can imagine. I've worked more jobs than you guys can possibly imagine. I've worked with kids. I've worked everywhere. I was sorting myself out, living in the city. I was, listen, I was managing so many things by myself. And I've done so much despite everything that I've been through. I've been getting closer with the Lord over the years. I have clung to Jesus, not just when it was fun, not just when it was, when it was, when it was, um, convenient, not just because Justin Bieber's at my church, not just because I've got a hundred thousand people sitting in my, in my, in my pulpit, not because it's nice to have the little Bible study clubs and all drink coffee together and talk about John 3, 16, for God's son of the world. Not because of any of that. I've been through it and I'm this, I'm where I'm at because I've been through hell. And you know, I've decided I'm going to give the world hell because my version of giving the word hell is, is building my version of the kingdom. That's what I've realized because I'm going to hold people accountable because guess what? No one can shut me down. There's not an area in this world, in this society. There's nothing you can try to say to, to try and suggest that I'm not stronger than the majority of the adult population or at least smarter or at least wiser or something in some area. There's nothing the adult population, majority of the adult population can say to me. Because all I have to ask you is, oh, so who do you have as your community? Ah, privileged, there you go. Privileged, privileged. You know, and people don't realize their privileges when they have them. That's one thing I've realized. I mean, real privileges. The people who know what privilege really is, is the people who are truly not privileged. Because some people be out here complaining like, oh, you know, as black people, we, we, we struggling and we went through this. And I'm like, man, you've inherited a house. And you want to talk to me about how you are struggling in 2024. <laughs> and you want to talk about privilege. You're privileged. It's insane to me how tone deaf the adult population actually is when I hear people's problems. It's like when I said to you guys about how I find it fascinating when you see these couples who are like really young arguing about washing the dishes. One person has made the equivalent of nothing, right? They make what? Spaghetti and meatballs. You fry some meat, like you fry some meatballs, the vegetables, whatever you want. You make a sauce, which no one makes their own sauces anyways. I make my own sauces. People just use sauces in the jar anyway. So you've done literally nothing, right? Boiled some spaghetti, sprinkled some already grated cheese right you both eat it as adults and there's arguments about who's washing the dishes do you know how many do you know what i had to do growing up i was washing the dishes for the whole house since i was 11 and i had a baby brother he was eating like six meals a day i'd have to wash his bottles and sterilize them and eat this and do that and then put him to bed and then bathe him and do all this stuff and whatever and i'm like it was 12, it was 12, well, it was 11 when I started washing dishes, 12 when my brother was born, right? And then I was also selling shoes. Um, anyway, so when I'm hearing adults talking about, you literally fried some meatballs with some onions and some garlic, right? 
the onions you didn't even cut you used something you bought off Timu to do the little squishy thing you used one pan one pot you both had a plate with forks and knives and two cups and we're arguing as grown adults about the dishes what like I don't get it I don't get society and you know I was feeling really hard and harsh about it and I am feeling hard and harsh about it still I'm struggling to really understand why the Lord has left me here because not only does it do I not get how people act nor do I even under I don't even want to participate I'll be so really honest okay excuse me I'll be so honest the Lord has been recently trying this is why my, my year has been hard since last year since the end of last year about this time the Lord has been really trying to get me to try this relationship thing. And when I say relationship, I mean friendships and like family and like, you know, all of that. Right. And it has been horrible because, of course, I have been met with exactly what I expected. All of the things that I hate about society. You know what I'm saying? Talking to people and they're trying to get to know me and I'm like, listen, it's fine, like, you know, whatever, they want to know, why am I quiet all the time, why do I take some time to myself, well, because I'm going through a lot, oh, you're going through a lot, and then it's the classic, oh, I'm sure, like, you know what I'm saying, like, you want to get to know me, I'm like, I don't recommend you do that, they try to get to know me, and people can't handle it, I get it, I've been through a lot of things, and I, the way that I am, like, I find that whenever I'm around people, and this is honestly my biggest fear, is that whenever, if I have people in my life again, I don't want to get to a point where people are having too much of an effect on how I behave. And my biggest, my real, truest, greatest fear is to become like the adult population of today, to become so comfortable in society that I become a coward, to become so comfortable in society that I become mentally weak, to become so uh, comfortable in society that I become silenced because I've worked really hard with the Lord and I've had to go through so much for me to learn to speak up and use my voice because I have been attacked on all fronts for using my voice. My voice. You guys wouldn't believe what happens even just for me uploading videos on YouTube and what I've been having to do behind the scenes and discussions I've been having to have about things like restraining orders. You guys wouldn't believe it. And you know what people will say to me, and this is why I don't like society, they'll say, oh, well, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that. I'm like, listen, there's not an area on earth that I am protected. Do people think, oh, don't talk about that on YouTube. I'm like, do you think it makes a difference? It doesn't make a difference. It doesn't, because everywhere that I turn, everywhere that I go, because of the nature of the people I've been involved with my entire life, this is why I don't go to the hospital. One of my greatest fears is going to the hospital, because what's the first thing that people do when you're in the hospital? They call certain people, they look for certain types of names in your phone. This is why I don't save people's numbers in my phone. In fact, I've actually been writing a living will, because I don't want, I don't want anybody to be called. I don't even give my number as a next of kin. I don't give a next of kin. I've, I've said to the, I've put in my living will that if I am to go to hospital, somebody needs to make a life or death decision, let it be the doctors. And first of all, just let me die. If the Lord wants to save me, he can save me because there's nothing that will horrify me more than somebody that I know from my past showing up. Listen, I've been through enough that I'm numb to everything. I'm numb, I'm numb to the, to the, to the, to the attacks on me. The only things that upset me now is the attacks on others who don't have a relationship I have with the Lord. Because guess what? God is protecting me. Guess what? When I've had nobody else to call and nobody else to anything and no one taking my side, no one being my ally, the Lord has been my, 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 the Lord has been there for me. The Lord has been my protector. The Lord has been my provider. The Lord has loved me unconditionally. The Lord has heard me, heard me out. The Lord has loved me for who I am. The Lord sees me. He hears me. He believes me. He knows. When I tell the Lord I'm doing my best, he's like, I believe you. I know. When I tell the Lord God, um, I can't do this today. Can you, like, can you help? He'll do it. You know, albeit not always how I want to. But he's the only person I trust. That's why when people are like, oh, you need people to talk to. Who the hell do I want to talk to? I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to be gaslit. I don't want to be, I don't want to be, this is what I'm saying. I need you guys to understand that from my standpoint, and I realise this is why this P. Diddy situation is upsetting me so much. I'm looking at everything. I don't want to talk to people because people talk to me as if I've lived in their side of the coin where it's like you've been, you're, you've been swayed along with the, with the, with the rest of the, the jury of the sheep or by these other folks. I'm not over there. I've been living in the hell of no one not believing you. I've been living in the hell of having to hold yourself up and show up and do things anyway. I've been living in the hell of just because you are put together and you are responsible and you are not on the side of the road doing crack cocaine and you're not out here sleeping with 10 guys a day and you're not out here, you know, just um, 
being messy on the internet or whatever else I could be be doing, be doing, you know what I mean? I could be destroying people's names. All these years I could have been here. Do you know how, do you know how, do you know how viral I would go for sharing my own stories, my story times of things that I've been through? (laughs) And I wouldn't even have to include some of these people, the perpetrators. I could just tell you the other stories. Even today I was thinking I had the best story time. I was like, if I was to be one of those messy girls on TikTok, oh my gosh. (laughs) Do you see what I'm saying? some of us over here and so I've realized that you know what maybe me sharing and me being honest and this is why I said I'm just going to be honest with you guys maybe I might lose some of you and some of you you should get you might want to unsubscribe genuinely because um I really don't want the darkness to affect anyone that's what I've realized the one of the big reasons I don't really open up is I don't want people to become consumed by the darkness that is my life You know what I mean? Because people, there are some lovely people out there and I just want people to be able to preserve that. Like, you don't have to see the world as darkly as I do. You know, that's why I like hanging around kids because they're kids. I have very clear and understand. I I just get lost in their world. So I forget about the darkness when I'm around kids. And I just, I just, I just step into their, I step out of my reality and I walk into their world. That's why I'm good with working with kids because I can just kind of just get swept into whatever it is that they're doing, right? And so, um, I don't want anybody to become swept up by my darkness basically is my is probably one of the many levels of my issues with now interacting with folks because I now have friends I now have a couple of friends I actually like in real life that I'm like hmm I can actually like I have strongly good vibes so I'm now having to like address all of my underlying issues that are not just obviously the overarching one being the state of the world and the state of overall society but there's other underlying things and I realize that's another one so anyway I felt like I had to make this video for you guys because I love you guys some of you so many of you have such beautiful souls once upon a time I was purely pure-hearted and just hopeful and naive and optimistic and that girl has died she died And it's so funny because it was this time last year as well. And I was just starting to feel these feelings of like, I really, really don't want to like entertain any types of relationships, friendships, whatever. Right. And, um, the Lord literally told me like, you need to die. Like, and I was like, what do you mean? And I know the thing is, you guys, you got to understand talking about death. I've been fighting off death my whole entire life. So it's not a big deal. Second of all, Jesus defeated death. So it's not like death, death isn't a big topic to me. Okay. Anyway, (laughs) So, uh, yeah, so I understood what he meant. He, I didn't really understand what he meant, but I realize it now that the old version of myself that used to exist, that was like, you know, still caring too much what people thought, trying to always do things the right way rather than the, like the most savvy way, you know, and using some of my, my, my opportunities that the Lord gives me to my advantage. Right. So for example, I'll give you guys another example of that. I never really use the fact that people think I'm an idiot to my advantage, but I actually should be because it actually gives me access in life to certain things, especially because people don't expect anything of me. So I actually should play into that more (laughs) and I'm going to, I'm going to play the dumb aloof, oh, just 27 year old girl who doesn't know what she wants and like, you know, just whatever and doesn't think. And it's just like the other women of today. I'm going to play into it because there's some areas in my life. There's some opportunities where playing into that character more than I ever have. will really work out for the greater good um but you know I just don't want I don't want I don't want I don't want you guys to become tainted okay listen I feel like I don't know I always think about my life as like being like or where I'm at in life right now like um a scene from seven deadly sins which ironically I watched at the start of January funnily enough it was after the Lord told me to die and I didn't understand what he meant but I now get I now get it like the old me had to just die and I think everything that has upset me so much and everything has made my blood boil it's like now I just internally I feel on fire like and I feel like nothing can stop me like I've got nothing to lose I don't trust anybody you know I've got literally nothing to lose I already don't have anywhere you guys are the only anywhere that I have that's why I'm telling you guys this stuff because I'm like I need to let my people know because these are the people who I don't want to disappoint everybody else honestly as long as I'm doing the will of the Lord as long as I'm seeing other people like myself, because that's what I realized, I probably need to speak up more so that other people like me can actually find me and have a community, you know, and some of my new friends that I've made recently, which is a whole story how that happened. Um, <laughs> but they're great, great girls, women as well, from like around my age is insane. Um, you know, they've, they've been through like something similar to me and I'm like, wow, I've actually like, this is nice, like for me. So that's why I'm realizing I have to try and, and just embrace 
the uncomfortability of it all um but also i don't want you guys to get sucked in and i feel like i don't know you guys i truly do care about you guys i know i'm horrifically bad at this youtube thing but it's because i'm always really trying to do what i feel like like i don't like to waste time and i don't want my life to be meaningless i don't want to be another person that just dies having done nothing with the short stint that the lord placed me on this earth and honestly for all the pain that i've been through i need to go out guns blazing out of this planet I need to go out guns blazing, I need to go out having had an impact, and I need to go out having, you know, found justice for those who have been through the things that I have, because for me, that's the only win that I really want, I realise there's no worldly wins, like, I'm not here like, oh, I'd love to have 10 million one day, listen, I will be rich anyways, it's standard, listen, I will be rich regardless, right, I will have a lot of things regardless, that's, I'm not worried about them, but, um, you know, I need to, what I really want is, I really want to make a difference, I want to be the person that believes people. I want to be the person that no one was for me to as many people as possible. And that is my driving force. So there you go. And that's how, th thank you for coming to my TED talk. But yeah, I love you guys here at the winning team. I hope you guys know that. I try my best to give you guys the best version of myself, to keep it real, to do something different. And you know, my favorite Bible verse, verse John 3.18, little children, let us love not just in word, but in deed and in truth. So I feel like, you know, one of the things I've learned this season is, hey, I'm, the Bible says thou shalt not lie. So certain situations where I don't say things because I feel like it'll be scandalous if I say the truth. I'm going to I've been saying the truth now because I'm like, well, I was told to tell the truth. So this is the truth. <laughs> so even if I feel like it's uncomfortable or, or whatever for me or the other person, I'm like, is this even appropriate for me to say? I'm like, well, I guess I'm saying it now. <laughs> And I'm kind of enjoying this. Well, I'm not really enjoying it. I'm actually hating every minute of living right now. But, you know, we're going to get there. <laughs> so, yeah, you guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. And I hope this sheds some light. And I feel like I feel relieved. Now I finally feel like I've recorded a video that I can actually upload that actually tells you guys exactly where I'm at. Because I've been trying for literally months. And I just, I just, oh, I just couldn't get it out. So, there we go. Anyways, you guys, if life's a game, it's pay to win. We stay winning. I'm so grateful for you all. Like I said, if you do decide to leave, please do protect yourself because it's going to get real dark around here because we need to really get to the, I don't want to be just focusing on the peripherals. Listen, if we're going to really do this thing about talking about what's really going on in the world, I'm not going to do this little baby version, baby milk version anymore that I, I have been in like, you know, for whatever reason, I'm going to go deep and dark as dark as it gets. And I ain't going to hold back no more because I'm like burning with fire, I can't even sleep right now, it's like two in the morning, I've been working, I'm exhausted, but I can't sleep, because every single moment, I just remember that I exist on this planet, at the moment, I just burn with fire inside, and it's not like anger, it's like passion, so, anyway, thank you guys for watching, because if life's a game, it's pay to win, God bless every single one of you, God loves you, I love you, and I'll see you in my next one.